good morning students today in this lecture we are going to start a new topic about babcock wilcox boiler and lehman boiler first coming to the babcock wilcox boiler we can observe the diagram of babcock wilcox boiler and by using of the below components we are going to construct the babcock wilcox boiler we i can show you these components in this babcock wilcox boiler one by one see here we can observe here d represents the drum means nothing but of a boiler shell boiler shell which is nothing but of a drum and dth means nothing but of a down take header and wt means nothing but of water tubes which we can observe here and bp means nothing but of baffle plates which is used for <coughs> reflecting the hot gases in a zigzag way upon to the fire tubes and uh, g means nothing but of a grate where we are going to do combustion process and fd is nothing but of a fire door where we are going to give coal upon to the grate see here mc is nothing but of a mud collector the way the sedimentation which has been formed in the water is collected here by using of this mud collector and wli wli means nothing but of water level indicator water level indicator shows how much water is there in the boiler drum and uh, coming to the pz pressure gauge pressure gauge represents uh, the uh, steam pressure and st represents uh, the superheated tubes we are having here superheated tubes and uh, sv represent the safety valve mc msv means nothing but of main stop valve and uh, app means nothing but of anti priming pipe and uh, here we are having a uh, lower junction box and here we are having upper junction box fv is nothing but of uh, feed valve this is what the components of babcock wilcox boiler by using of these different components we are going to construct uh, this babcock wilcox boiler here see <coughs> This is what what we have studied up to night. Now about uh, the construction of Babcock and Wilcox boiler. See the first one is about steam. First one is uh, about uh, the steam and water drum. Means nothing but of boiler shell. And uh, here we are using water tubes and uh, uptake header and down comer, grate, furnace, baffles, superheater, mud box, inspection door, dampers, which we can show in the diagram itself. see coming to the steam and water drum <coughs> in the boiler shell half of the part is filled with the water and half of the part is filled with the steam we can observe here that the half part has been filled with water and the remaining half is filled with the steam contained with the steam it the boiler shell is about 8 meters length and 2 meters in diameter and coming to the water tubes water tubes are uh, inclined in position and uh, um the inclined position is about 10 to 15 degrees which is used for water circulation see here these tubes are connected to the uptake header and down take head header see we can observe here here we are having the uptake header and down take header these are the water tubes which are connected to the upper upper take header and down take header see coming to here uptake header the drum is connected to the end and to the uptake header by short tubes and other end to the down comer by long tubes here uh, it has been these down take header and uptake header has been connected to the boiler drum by using of pipes at uh, the uptake header we are having a short pipe and uh, uh, we for down comer we are having long tubes which has been connected to the boiler shell and coming to the grate upon the grate the coal is feed by feed from the fire door which is used for combustion process upon the fire fire is kept below the uptake header which we can observe in the diagram and baffles are used to deflect uh, the hot gases upon to the 
upon to the these water pipe water pipes water flow pipes super heater is nothing but of uh, boiler is fitted with the super heater tube which is placed just under the drum and above the water tubes and the mud box is nothing but of what are the sedimentations formed in the boiler are collected uh, through this mud through this down take header and by using of this bond down take header this sedimentations are collected is nothing but of a uh, blow of cock inspection doors are there in the diagram which when which we can observe there it is uh, used for the doors uh, by opening of these doors we can enter into the boiler for cleaning and inspection purposes see the working of uh, babcox and wilcox boiler here we can observe that the water in the boiler shell the water in the boiler shell is going to be entered into the down take header by using of this long pipe and after entering into the down take header by it uh, transfers in up to the um, it uh, enters into this water tubes the water which has been collected from the boiler shell will come to the down take header by using of this down take header the water enters uh, into this uh, water tubes and uh, it is going up to it enters up to the uptake header and uh, this uptake header has been connected to the this boiler shell <clears throat> and here by using of this feed valve we are feeding water and by using of this water level indicator we are going to check how much water is there in the boiler shell and by using of this pressure gauges we are going to check the pressure value of the steam here upon the grate um, by using of this feed door we are going to feed coal upon to the grate where here the combustion process takes place after the complete combustion takes place the hot gases which are produced are generated by use uh, here upon the grate the hot gases uh, will rise up and uh, enters uh, upon to the water tubes uh, and uh, the baffles which are provided here are deflects these hot gases uh, in a zigzag way and uh, enters uh, at last uh, these hot gases uh, will enters into the atmosphere what is the water coming from the boiler shell it enters into these water tubes due to these hot gases um, the water in the um, water tubes is going to be got uh, heated is going to get heated due to convection process and uh, it has been changed into the steam and the steam is going to be entered here in the half part of the boiler shell see here after the steam has been entered here it is entered into the anti priming pipe in anti priming pipe the wet means nothing the moisture content has been removed here the anti prime uh, in anti priming uh, mm, pipe uh, the moisture content in the steam has been removed and the steam will enters into the super heater steam and the steam has been converted into uh, the super heated steam and after converting the steam into super heated uh, steam means uh, nothing but of raising the temperature of the steam in the super heater means uh, here with uh, a low temperature here uh, after priming uh, it enters uh, the steam is going to be entered into superheater tubes and here the temperature will rises and uh, after the steam will moves uh, into the main stop main stop valve here the main stop valve controls the steam and uh, it stores uh, in the steam in the steam storage and uh, it gives uh, whenever the steam has been required for generating of the power this is what about the babcox wilcox boiler working principle here see here working coal is fed to the grate through the fire door and is burned see what i have shown you there at the diagram the hot flue gases rises up and pass across the left side portion of the water tubes the baffle deflect the flue gases and hence the flue gases travel in the zigzag manner see here you can observe that uh, the hot gases which are produced here will going to be passed in a zigzag way here in a zigzag way 
the hot gas are deflected by the vapors to move in the upward direction then downward and again in the upward direction over the water tubes and along the superheat the flue gases finally escape to the atmosphere through chimney what i have shown in the diagram see what about water circulation how the water is going to be circulated here that portion of water tubes which is just above the furnace is heated comparatively at a high temperature than the rest of it see when these hot gases are see when the hot gases are rising upwards the water inside the water tubes are going to be heated see here uh, water its density being decreased rises in the drum through the uptake header here the steam and water are separated in the drum we can observe that the steam and uh, water steam and water in the boiler shell has been separated here and uh, steam being lighter is collected in the upper part uh, of the drum the water from the drums come down through the down comer into the water tubes which i have shown in the diagram a continuous circulation of water from the drum to the water tubes and uh, water tubes to the drum is thus obtained maintained the circulation of uh, water is maintained by convective currents and is also known as natural circulation here we are having damper is fitted as shown to regulate the flue gas outlet and hence the draw the boiler is fitted with the necessary mountings the pressure gauge water level indicator and the safety valve and the blow of cock what i have shown you there in the diagram itself and uh, some of the applications of uh, babcock and wilcox boiler are see the main application of babcock and wilcox boiler to produce high pressure steam in power generation industries for getting high pressure steam in power generation industries these babcock and wilcox boiler are going to be used here we are having some of the advantages of babcock and wilcox that the overall efficiency of the boiler is high the steam generation rate is higher about 20 ton per hour at the pressure 10 to 20 bars the tubes can be replaced easily the boiler can expand and contact freely it is easy to repair maintenance and cleaning these are some of the disadvantages it is less suitable for impure and sedimentary water hence water treatment is very essential for water tube boilers failure in feed water supply even for a short period the maintenance cost is high this is what some of the disadvantages of Babcox and Wilcox boiler. See, once again, I am going to explain you the Babcox Wilcox boiler working principle. See the water which has been contained, the half portion of the boiler shell is going to be contained with the water, and the other portion of the shell is contained with the steam. See the water which is contained in the boiler shell is entering into the downtake header by using of this long pipe after uh, the water has been entered into the downtake header the water which is uh, the water is going to be entered in the water tubes the water which is having low density is going to be raised upon to the uptake header and after see here by using of this fire door we are going to feed coal upon to the grate and here uh, after complete combustion has been takes place the hot gases are going to be raised upon to the water tubes and what is the water which is inside the tubes due to these hot gases see these hot gases are going to be circulated among these water tubes in a zigzag way and at last uh, these hot gases are going to be uh, appeared into the atmosphere dispersed into the atmosphere see due to these hot gases what are the water in the tubes are going to be heated and it go is going to be converted into the steam the steam which is uh, has been converted by using of this uh, uptake header has been sent into the steam um, sculpted place and uh, the steam is going to be I entered into the anti priming pipe and uh, the wet steam or the moisture which has been collected in the steam is removed by using of this anti priming pipe and it is going to be sent into the superheated superheated tube and uh, the steam is going to be entered into the superheated steam where the superheated steam 
tubes are going to raise the temperature of the steam and at last uh, after converting the steam into superheated the it the steam is going to be entered into the main stop valve here it is going to be collected and uh, whenever the steam is required from here the steam is going to be used for the power generation process this is what about the babcox wilcox working principle and these are some of the accessories which we are using here for the babcox and wilcox boiler and coming to the next topic we are having high pressure boilers high pressure boilers see here boilers which generate steam at a pressure with a range of 80 to 160 bar a temperature about 5000 degrees 5000 degrees celsius producing capacity of 30 to 50 tons of steam per hour are called high pressure boilers what are the pressures here 80 to 160 bar and temperature should be maintained at 5000 degrees celsius and uh, the steam producing up to 30 to 650 degrees tons of steam per hour are called high pressure boilers in modern power plants high pressure boilers are universally used water tube boilers are generally used as high pressure boilers see we are having the following are the important high pressure boilers which we are using here in thermal power plants or steam power plants that lemon boiler benson boiler love low fair boiler and a uh, volex boiler these are some of the high pressure boilers which we are using uh, here in these uh, high pressure boilers in this video we are going to learn about uh, lemon boiler see coming to the lemon boiler here we can observe the working principle of the lemon boiler that this uh, um, pump uh, the pump is going to pump uh, cold air uh, into this uh, air preheater where here the by using of this air preheater the air is going to be get uh, heated and it is going to be transferred uh, hot air outside inside the furnace used in the furnace see here the cold the pump is going to be the pump is going to transfer the cold air into the air preheater where here the heating has been generated and the heat is going to be hot air is used in the furnace purposes see here the pump which we are using here feed pump the feed pump is feeding water upon to the economizer where the heating has been he heating the temperature has been generated here and uh, the water which is going to be feed by using of this pump enters into the economizer after the temperature has been generated it is going to be entered into the steam and water drum and from the steam and water drum it is going to be entered the water feed water which has been feeded here is entered into the forced circulation pump by using of this forced circulation pump it enters into the this lemon radiant here it is going to be converted into vapor formation and uh, again these vapor formed or water vapor forms which has been formed here is again enters uh, into the steam and water drum and from the steam and water drum it is going to be entered into the convective super heat super heater for converting the fully for converting the fully vapored formation and it is going to be entered into the turbine so this is what about the lemon boiler how it is going to be worked here once again i can i will explain you about this lemon boiler that uh, in the pump uh, by using of this pump uh, cold air is sucked and uh, transfers into the air preheater here the air has been heated heated and uh, it generates uh, hot air outside uh, for using the hot air uh, in the furnace uh, for combustion process see here the pump uh, we, which we are having here the pump is used to feed uh, water into the economizer here the feed water which enters into the economizer has been heated 
or raises the temperature and send the feed water into the steam and water drum here the feed water which has been entered into the steam and uh, drum water is uh, again forced uh, again enters into the forced circulation pump by using of the forced circulation pump it is going to be entered into the lemon boiler and uh, here it is go the feed water is going to be converted into vapor formation and again it is going to be sent into the steam and water drum and from the water steam and water drum it's again sent into the convective superheater where these where here the vaporization takes place and it enters into the turbine this is what about the lemon boiler working principle here we can observe the diagram the lemon principle here also in the same way that the cold air by using of this blower fan is going to be entered say, into the air preheater where uh, here the heat generates and uh, it gives hot air for uh, complete combustion for doing complete combustion process and water from hot well from water from hot well is feeding up onto the economizer where heat takes place and it enters into the steam separating drum where the steam and water are going to be separated here from these it is going to be entered into the convective evaporator see here it enters into the convective evaporator and from the convective ev evaporator and uh, the feed water which is coming from economizer is going to be entered uh, into this pump or circulating pump by using of this circulating pump uh, by distributing header now it transfers into the distributing header and then from the distributing header it enters into the radiant evaporator and from the radiant evaporator it enters into the superheater and it superheats uh, and uh, again it is going to be transferred into the turbine superheated steam to prime over this is what about the lemon boiler and what are the hot gases uh, here some combustion has been takes place and what are the hot gases producing is going to the upwards to exhaust gases outside to the atmosphere by by touching of these uh, economizer as well as uh, convective evaporator and radiant evaporator see here this is the principle of the lemon boiler this boiler works on basic principle of forced convection if the water is circulated by a pump inside the tube the heat transfer rate from gas to water increases it is the basic principle of the lemon boiler see here the construction this boiler is the first four circulation boiler this boiler consists of various parts which are as follows we are, we can observe this economizer economizer used to preheat the water by using remaining heat of the combustion gases it increases the boiler efficiency see here the economizer is used to preheat the water by using of remaining heat of the combustion gases for improving the boiler efficiency and coming to the centrifugal pumps it is going to pump the circulation water inside the boiler pump is driven by a steam turbine the steam turbine for the turbine is taken by the boiler here the evaporator is there the operator tubes uh, in the evaporator tube the water is going to be circulated see and uh, this cools down uh, the water inside uh, the operator see here the grate uh, grate is nothing but of uh, where we are doing the combustion process and in the furnace uh, vertical furnace is used the main function of furnace is to burn the fuel superheater is there the steam generated by the operator operated tube is saturated steam if it directly used in a steam turbine can cause the corrosion so the saturated steam sent to the superheater where it can increase the temperature of the steam see if we are going to use the steam turbine steam directly they it is going to form corrosion so it is enters into the superheater then uh, it increases the temperature of the steam here by using of the superheater see here water steam separator drum is going to separate the steam as well as uh, the water here and air preheater which uh, he preheats the air before entering into the 
furnaces. I, what I have explained you about uh, the working principle of uh, lemon boiler near the diagram, we are going to um, get in the step by step manner here in a point where that lemon boiler is a forced circulation boiler. Forced, why we are using force remains as we are using pumps uh, for uh, pumping the air or feed water uh, into the boiler. Internally fired water tube boiler means the firing, the combustion is going to take place inside the boiler itself. The fuel is, um, is burned inside the boiler and the water is circulating by a centrifugal pump through evaporator tubes. In the tubes, uh, the water is going to be circulated here. The working of this boiler is as follows. A feed pump forces the water into the economizer where the temperature of water increases. See here, you can observe this. Here. The feed water is going to be sent into the economizer where the water, uh, the temperature of the water is going to be increases here. And uh, coming to here, we can observe the fuel is burned inside the boil and uh, feed to the where temperature of the water forced into the operator tube by using of centrifugal steam pump. Here we are using the steam pump for forcing uh, into the economizer here. And coming to here, Water passes 10 to 15 times in the evaporator tube. The mixture of saturated steam and water is formed inside the tube. Here, as the water is circulating in the evaporator, water is circulating in the evaporator up to 10 to 15 minutes. See here. In the operator, the mixture of saturated steam and water is formed inside the tube. The mixer sends uh, sends to the steam separator drum which is outside the boiler. I have shown you in the diagram about uh, the steam separator which can separate the steam and water. Steam from the separator sends to the steam superheater where the super saturated steam converted into superheated steam which I have shown you in the diagram itself. The water again sends to the economizer where it again passes by the evaporator tubes. The air from the Air preheater enters into the furnace where fuel burns. The fuel gases first heat the evaporator tube and then passes by the superheater. These gases from the superheater again used to preheat the air into the air preheater before exhaust to the temperature. This is what about the working principle of a lemon boiler which we can observe here that uh, the cold air is going to be entered into the air preheater. The, here the cold air is going to be preheated and uh, it is going to get uh, some hot air. It is going to convert into hot air and the hot air is exhausted outside and it is used for the furnace purposes. And uh, here we are going to feed uh, the water by using of this pump we are going to feed water upon to the economizer where uh, the water temperature is going to be raised in the economizer and it is going to be entered into the steam and water drum. After it is going to be entered into the steam and water drum by using of this here the steam as well as the water is going to be separated here and then the water is going to be entered into the forced circulation pump. By using of this heat pump it is uh, entered in the water is going to be entered into the lemon boiler. Here the water is going to be converted into water vapor formation. And uh, the water vapor formation has been entered again into the steam and water drum. And from the steam and water drum, it is going to be entered into the convective super heater for converting the steam into fully vaporized form. And it is going to be entered into the turbine formation for turbine for doing the power for power generation. This is what about the lemon boiler working principle which we have studied one by one in a stepwise. And coming to here, we are having some advantages that it can high pressure boiler. It is uh, flexible in design. For designing this uh, lemon boiler, it is very flexible. We can design. This boiler can be reassembled in natural circulation boiler. It is also, it is uh, designed in a natural circulation boiler. It can easily start it has high steam generation capacity of about 50 ton per hour. This boiler has higher heat transfer rate. This is what uh, about uh, what we have studied about the lemon uh, boiler. See in this video we have studied 
about uh, the working principles of uh, babcox and wilcox boiler and about uh, the lemond boiler how the construction and working principles of uh, lemon boiler and uh, babcox and wilcox boiler this is what about uh, the boilers and the remaining boilers we are going to study in the next video if you are having any doubts please mail to this mail id or call to me thank you